Hello, in this video we're going to derive the demand functions from a quasi-linear utility function. So let's first start with a quasi-linear utility function in general functional form. Utility equals this function v plus b times y. Uh, this utility function is linear in one good, in this case y, and nonlinear in the other good, in this case x. So this uh, this function v here will increase with x. So as x increases, this function v will increase. And here's some examples of this function v. It could be represented by the natural log of x, or 2 times the square root of x, or if an x squared. So all of these functions are nonlinear in x. So here's a specific functional form of a quasi-linear utility function. Utility equals 4 times the square root of x plus 2 times y. We want to derive the demand for good x and the demand for good y. We'll start by getting the Martian utility of good x. Uh, doing that, uh, we get 2 times x to the minus 1 half power. So I bring this 1 half down in front here of the 4. So 4 times 1 half is 2. And then this exponent here, 1 half minus 1, leaves us leaves us with x raised to the minus one-half power. Uh, the marginal utility of good y, uh, partial derivative of the utility function with respect to good y, is just going to be 2. I'm going to now form the marginal rate of substitution by taking the marginal utility of good x and divide it by the marginal utility of good y. So on the left-hand side here, we've got the marginal utility of good x divided by the marginal utility of y. And we're going to set that equal to the ratio of the prices, the price of good x to the price of good y. Now we're going to simplify this and solve for x. So the 2's cancel. So on the left-hand side, we have x raised to the minus 1 half power. Following the rules of exponents, this x raised to the minus 1 half can be brought down into the denominator to look something like this. If I were to multiply both sides through by the square root of x, I would get this result here. And then multiplying both sides through by the price of good y divided by the price of good x, x to the 1 half power equals the following. And then finally squaring both sides to get rid of the x raised to the 1 half, we'll square both sides and we have the demand for good x. So this is a demand for good x. As price of good x increases, x will become smaller. The consumer will buy fewer units. And one interesting feature here of this quasi-linear utility function is that income is absent here uh, for uh, the demand for good x. We don't see any value for income in here. So the consumer will continue to buy the same quantity of x regardless of his or her income, assuming income is, in, uh, is not zero. Okay, uh, let's get the demand for good Y. So here's uh, the general budget constraint for the consumer. Income equals the amount of spending on good X plus the amount of spending on good Y. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the demand for good X that we just solved for, and I'm going to plug it in here in this term for X. So we found that the demand for good X is the price of good Y divided by the price of good X, and all of that is squared. So making that substitution in to the budget constraint for X, we get this. And now it's just a matter of solving for Y to get the demand for good Y. So moving some things around, okay, uh, subtracting or moving this, uh, this term here over uh, to the income side, we get this result. And now I'm going to divide through by the price of good Y. So M is going to be divided through by the price of good Y. And then a few things here. Uh, the price of good X divided by the price of good X squared. We'll just leave the price of good X in the denominator. And then finally, I'm again dividing both sides through by the price of good Y. The price of good Y squared divided by this price of good Y over here. We'll just leave price of good Y in the numerator. So this is our demand for good Y. One final note, if Y happens to be negative, that's not possible. So in that case, if we get a negative value for Y, the demand for good X will simply be the income divided by the price of good X. And the demand for good Y will just be zero. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful.